Hi everyone, good evening. Can you guys hear me rightfully and see me rightfully, please? Just wanted to get the confirmation from you. Hi everyone, can you guys just confirm someone please that are you guys able to hear me and see me rightfully? Yes, hello. Good day, hello. Yeah. Yes, you are audible, yeah. really audible. All right, good, thank you very much. Can I request all of you to please switch on your cameras? Now let, let us make this a conversation which is face to face rather than me speaking to a camera and the name. Let's make it as interactive as possible. We are talking about a curriculum. We're talking about a course that is going to be changing the lives of many. So I would really appreciate if all of you can really switch on your cameras and have a candid chat with me in terms of, you know, what this qualification is all about. Can I expect that, please? Dinesh, Rinal, Karan, Crystal, Shivani, Ankit, Rida, Rahul, Mahi, Sadek, Akriti, Arjun, Anaya. Can I can I request all of you, please? Irrespective of what your background is, that is not important. So don't worry on that front. What is really important is that we should have this candid chat in terms of understanding each other. And of course, knowing each other in the best possible way. I would give you 30 seconds to please switch on your cameras. Karan, Dinesh, Crystal, Shivani, Rahul, Akriti. You bring that or you forget? Can you please, can you please mute yourself? All right, I think uh, many of you have not yet switched on your camera, but will not will not waste any more time on this. Guys, let me just inform you in advance, in case you're planning to join up the classes that you would be attending with us, you would really be, be prepared that you would need to switch on your cameras. It will never be an audio call for us. It will certainly be an interactive session and be ready for that, that you know, if you're joining the session, then it has to be a candid, video on chat with all of us. All right, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, I, I really welcome you all and of course taking out time. Thank you for that, for really being part of this session. I would be keen to understand and I'll be you know, making this house open to really talk about that in terms of what, what you really thought that you would achieve from this session. So I'll be happily, and the reason I'm trying to ask you is that another 45 minutes of time, I really want to ensure that I'm able to give you what you really need. So I'll be happy to understand what is that that you guys are expecting out of this session. I'll probably start with Vishal. Vishal, what is that that Vishal expects out of the session? CPA, registration and other details because I want to do CPA right now. So you don't trying to understand what CPA is all about? No, actually I know very basic knowledge about it uh, regarding CPA is uh, equal to chartered accountancy for his governing body. And Got what that. subject are there in what is exam pattern, how much fees we need to pay for uh, exam and preparation, etc. Et Got that. Thank you. Dinesh, do you want to go next? Yes, sir, definitely. So what is that that Dinesh you're expecting out of the meeting today? Just one second, sir. Sir, actually, you know, the first thing which I wanted to know about the CPA, like 
as as the other person told that uh, the slavers, the exam patterns, because till now I'm quite confused whether all the questions are MCQ based or there are some theoretical questions as well. Because I had a discussion with a few consultants. Few of them told me that every questions are related to the MCQ only. Uh, but few told me that. Uh, there are 50 percentage uh, related to mcq and the remaining questions are the theoretical based so i'm quite confused about that and uh, apart from that i just wanted to know uh, two more things <clears throat> like the first one uh, like i'm planning to settle abroad outside of india so uh, i know a bit like there is a lot of swap over there but how I can apply uh, like in Canada or Australia. And apart from that, the, another question is, I, I have seen one of your video where you told, uh, where in the video you, you mentioned that if I'm having the US CPA degree, I can uh, get the Australian CPA or the Canadian CPA license as well. So just wanted to confirm that is there any like exams for that, any particular exam, or we need to give the taxes or compliance exams as well for the different countries. And do we need to surrender one one country CPA if if I'm like, like let's say if I'm having the US CPA degree? Okay. Do I need to surrender uh, if I'm planning to enroll for the Australian CPA? Okay, I get that. That is a major uh, concern. And apart from uh, that, as I'm the working professional, so I wanted to know if, if I spend two to three hours in a day, so am I? Uh, will I be able to complete the CP exam in next 12, 12 to 15 months or it would be quite difficult for that? Got that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That is that's it from my side. Got it. Thank you. Karan, do you want to go next? Let's make it short, guys, as much as possible. Let's quickly come on to the questions. Karan, what do you what do you want? What what is that that you're expecting out of this this meeting? Karan. Karan, can you hear me? All right, moving on to Abdullah. Abdullah Almin. What is that that you are expecting, my friend? If something that is, all, that is already being said, don't repeat that. Anything more that you have in your mind, I'll be happy to understand that. Minal, do you want to go next? Yes, sir. So, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Minal Roda. Actually, I've already attended uh, one of the lectures, them lectures, and I'm very keen on it. I just joined, I mean, this is very informative, and uh, I mean, all my doubts about CPI have been cleared here. And uh, right now I joined because I might gain something which I haven't gained before. So I'm attending it again. Got it. Thank you. All right, Crystal, do you want to go next? Shivani? Ankit? Rita, Rahul, Mahi, Sadek, Sadek, I think I know, Akriti, Arjun, Anaya, Vinny. Guys, this is your time. If I'll know what you want to know out of this, I, I'll be more than happy to probably help you in terms of at least 
having some hang of what this qualification is all about. All right, no problem. So maybe we'll start off with this. So welcome guys. The, the session would certainly revolve around what US EPA qualification is and what is that that you uh, probably would need to be aware of as far as this qualification is concerned. Let me bring on um, some of the slides for your reference just to make sure that at least we are on the same page. Let me know if you're able to see that. All righty. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. All right, good. Thank you very much. So this is what we intend to cover. Before we really move on, let me introduce myself. My name is Pankaj Dhingra. I'm a qualified chartered accountant and a CPA from US. Um, more than 20, 25 years of experience now uh, in various corporates. I was the head of finance for Wipro, moved as the head of finance for BlackRock, and I was the global controller for uh, Boston Consulting Group for a long, long time, and then decided to really, of course, move on. While I've been like being part of these corporations, I've also been uh, a global faculty for CA, which is Indian CA, and then US CPA and ACC at large. I've given my WhatsApp number if anybody would want to connect with me in terms of understanding anything, or if you have any specific doubts, you can certainly reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to really answer you there and then. Quickly moving on to CP as a qualification, let me just tell you that I, you know, I, I did saw some of you mentioning that you know you have a basic idea of CP as a qualification. Let me just tell you, like we have Indian Chartered Accountancy, as in CA in India. In US, the same CA is being called CPA, which is Certified Public Accountant, which effectively uh, wants that you should be able to clear, of course, the exams that are needed to become a qualified accountant there. And that is what we're really talking about. So we are effectively talking about US CA or CPA as a qualification that you can achieve right here now sitting out in India, because gone is the time wherein you really have to go to US for appearing for these exams. Now is the time wherein you prepare for these exams right over here at your home. You prepare for exams, register for your exams, and of course, give these exams over here only. You don't have to go anywhere of, and of course, you know, look for an alternate. This is something that, you know, you, you, I, I didn't have that uh, benefit at the time when I gave my exam because that point in time, mine um, case was that I had to go to US for writing the exams. Then, you know, over a period of time, they shifted the exam place to Dubai. And now it is there in India. You can very well give out of various locations in India. You can give exams over here only. As I said, it is a it is the chartered accountancy of US. So effectively, uh, considering that you would be um, uh, a CPA qualified candidate from the US standpoint, your demand really goes up in any and every US company. Uh, which is there in US or which is there in India or elsewhere in the world because you would be working for organizations who are bound to comply with US regulations and for that they really need qualified CPAs. That is one of the reasons you would have seen huge demand coming up for US CPAs professionals in big fours, in US MNCs, in Indian MNCs also who are being listed in US. So I was part of a pro when I did my CPA and Wipro uh, is a listed entity in US. So Wipro has to go through various formalities, various uh, submissions, various registrations, various uh, filings that they really needed to do in the US. So CPA was a big time advantage there. And of course, BlackRock being a US company, BCG being a US company, every company now then, now, now then you, you know, when you'll, which you'll pick up would have some stream or some something to do with US because that's how US is. And that is one of the reasons, you know, why the demand of CPAs are more than the supply. And that is what really gets us to the demand because you are needed in various companies while we do not have many professionally qualified CPAs around even at this point in time. And of course, some of the latest reports also observes the same, same pattern wherein they also say, that demand of CPA is going to be very high as compared to supply, not only for this year, but for the coming years too. If you really talk on, and this is something that, that somebody mentioned, you know, what kind of exams one has to appear in CPA to become a qualified CPA? There are four exams, my friends, that you really need to appear for. And three exams are mandatory exams, which are called core exams, which is nothing but the ordinary attestation. 
We have financial accounting and reporting, and then you have taxation and regulation. We call it audit, reg, and FAR. These three are mandatory exams. Everyone have to appear for these three exams. There is no option available. However, then there are three discipline exams, out of which you have to choose one, and that is what would conceptualize your four exams to be required for clearing the CP as a as a as a qualification. So, if I really have to give you some insight in terms of you know, and again we'll deep dive into all of these subjects in a while, but audit is 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 of course the basic audit and attestation work that you would need to do in US. But of course, once you'll understand these audit, uh, this audit as a subject, you will probably understand that you have to understand how the audit is happening in US. So you will probably be going through the generally accepted auditing standards that are prevalent in US. We call it US gas, which are prevalent in US as far as the audit as a function is concerned. So you have to go through that and of course, you know, give your best there. Then comes the FAR, which is financial accounting and reporting. Um, you know, over here, you effectively learn the accounting and the reporting piece of it, um, which effectively means that you're learning the U.S. gap, U.S. generally accepted accounting principles. Like we have in AS in India, in U.S. you have U.S. gap. So if you effectively go through the entire gap as a, you know, as a subject in terms of having a command over what the accounting and the, and the reporting ways are there in U.S., then comes the U.S. taxation. So you'll be learning, you know, what kind of tax structures you have, what kind of tax entities, what kind of uh, ways uh, in which you will be taxed in U.S. So you effectively learn which kind of um, uh, forms are needed under the various capacities. So you'll learn individual taxation, you'll learn corporate taxation, you'll learn partnership taxation, and so on and so forth. So that is what the taxation and regulation is all about. If I move on to the discipline subject, you know, if I really say bar, business analysis and reporting, I would always say this to be an elder brother of FAR. So there are complex topics of financial accounting and reporting, which are now being added on as the business analysis and reporting subject. So all of the complex topics are being taken up. And of course, business analysis and reporting has a lot of economics and, and business studies concepts. So you would be learning the perfect competition, the demand, the supply, the monopoly, the monopolistic competition. You'll be learning various costing concepts, let's say marginal costing, standard costing, and so on and so forth. So all of that is included in business analysis and reporting, wherein they want you to understand the business to the core and, of course, understand the reporting. ISC is an extension of audit, if I may say that, for the lack of better word, because um, various areas in relation to finance, which are now coming under the lens of information systems and control are, are being covered and, you know, under this umbrella, you will be going through various aspects of, let's say, cybersecurity, the control mechanism, the system checks and balances and so on and so forth that, has, that are needed for a finance guy to, of course, um, do justice to the job that is being given to them. So ISC really entails and, of course, covers all of that. Then comes the TCP, which is tax compliance and planning. I would say this is an elder brother for, again, taxation and regulation, which is a core subject. You learn some complex topics in relation to, you know, let's say, uh, taxes or filings or you appearing to the tax authorities in the TCP as a subject. You have a choice of choosing one and there is, there is no, I would say, um, um, one choice for all. You Depending upon what you like the more, you can, of course, choose your, your right step forward as far as these discipline subjects are concerned. We, of course, recommend, uh, you know, some particular streams of subjects to some, some 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 specific, I would say, set of individuals, depending upon which background you come for. And of course, we'll be guiding you which subject would suit you better. If I really have to come on to the exam pattern, I've noted this down. There was a question around this that, you know, what kind of exam pattern is there in, in USCP exam? Almost 50 to 60 percent of your entire exam, depending upon you know various exams, is MCQ based. The remaining exam is task based simulation. So in the MCQs, you will get a question and then you have four choices. You have to click one and move ahead. In the task based simulation, there's a case that will be given to you. You know, you as in there will be a exhibit that will have a case that will have a situation. You probably have to go through that situation. And then there will be some questions that will be asked on that particular case. So you may get a you know, MCQ, you may get a 
fill in the blank kind of a question. You may get a match the following kind of a question or you may get a calculative question where you have to calculate something and, you know, put a figure there. So depending upon, you know, what he may, I might want to be asking you, you would get a task-based simulation over there. Then comes the written communication task. This is only and only there in bar exam. No other exam has this wherein you are supposed to write a memo or a letter or an email, depending upon, you know, what examiner really throws out you to really demonstrate your writing abilities, your communication abilities, and so on and so forth. But it will always be combination of an MCQ and task-based simulation as far as the exam is concerned. Each exam is a four-hour exam. And of course, you get a 15 minutes break in between. But each exam, whether it is discipline or whether it is the, the main exam, the core exam, all the exams are of four, four hours. If I really deep dive in the in the ordinary attestation so i'm now getting on to the core core exams if i really deep dive on to the audit and attestation which is audit as a subject this subject effectively has um you know three important areas or four important areas on which it is being tested you would be learning the ethics and the pr professional responsibilities of an auditor you'll be understanding the risk that an audit has and of course Considering that risk, what is, should be your response is something that you'll be understanding. You'll also be understanding the procedures, the processes, and of course, the evidence that you really need to gather when it comes to the, um, I would say, the overall audit as a function, and then forming the conclusion or forming the right answer or forming the audit opinion is something you'll be learning towards the end in terms of understanding that, yes, this is what an auditor would do uh, when it comes to the you know, holistic closure of an audit per se. 50% weightage is being given to the MCQ. So there are 78 MCQs in the exam. And then you have seven short task-based simulations in the exam, which again has 50% weightage. And I've already explained what the simulation is going to be all about. If I really move on to the financial accounting and reporting over here, the weightage is 50% of multiple choice questions and 50% of these simulations, which is seven simulations you get. The three topics which are, you know, I would say extensively tested in the in the exam, we have financial accounting and reporting. You know, that is, that is one. Just a sec, I am seeing a glitch, just a sec. Can you guys see my screen? Just, oh, I, I saw some glitch coming in. Can you guys see my screen, please? Can somebody please confirm? Yes, we can. All right, thank you. So financial accounting and reporting effectively covers three broad areas. One, of course, you'll be understanding the, the presentation of the financial statements, which is more to do with the financial reporting. You'll be understanding more on the US gap. So you'll be tr trying to understand the treatments that are there. Uh, for various, you know, I would say the specific gap. So you'll be learning the, let's say, lease accounting, defer tax accounting. You'll be learning the revenue recognition. You'll be learning um, the, the post-retirement benefits and so on and so forth. So there are various U.S. gaps that relates to all of these areas. And you'll be learning all of them uh, more from the accounting and reporting perspective. And then you have some specific transactions that, that you learn in financial accounting and reporting, which are very much uh, relevant for you to to file your, um, I would say, income statement or file your uh, statement of financial position, the transactions that are required to be disclosed in the notes to accounts and so on and so forth. So all of that you'll be covering. And again, exam is for four-hour exam. As I said, 50 multiple choice questions and seven task-based simulations. If you really go on to the regulation side of it, now that this is really interesting because in regulation, you, get, you know, the exam is for four hours uh, and you have five broad areas to be covered over here. You'll be learning the ethics and the professional responsibilities, what you would need, really need to demonstrate as far as the tax filing is concerned. You'll be learning the basics law that is relevant, which is more like a business law, more to do with the agreement, contracts and all of that. You'll be learning property transactions. You'll be learning federal trans taxations of individuals. And of course, you'll be learning the taxation for the entities, whether it is partnership, whether it is corporation, so you have S corporation, C corporation, the limited liability companies, and so on and so forth. So all of that you really, you really learn over here in terms of you know what do you really need to do to really calculate their income and of course you know furnish 
the income tax return of these organizations. Four are exams, 72 multiple choice questions, eight task-based simulations. Moving on to business analysis and reporting, I think we already spoke in terms of you know the coverage. We, of course, have business analysis, which is more to do with the economics and the costing side of it. That is included in it. We have some technical, complex accounting and relating areas, reporting areas that are included in this. And of course, then we have state and local government accounting that is included in this as far as the curriculum is concerned. It is again a four-hour exam having 50 multiple choice questions, four task-based simulations and three written communication skills, again carrying 50% of the weightage per se. Moving on to the information systems and control. Again, ISC is, is more to do with the system related areas, the data management related areas. So there are three important areas that we really cover out here, which is like information systems and data management. We cover various security related aspects, privacy related aspects in this. We also cover various organizational controls that are needed. So, you know, a maker checker kind of a thing. I'm just making it simple for you, but those are the organization control that we'll be testing on, you know, in this exam. For our exam, 82 multiple choice questions having 60% weightage and six task-based simulations having 40% weightage as far as the ISC is concerned. Moving on to TCP, the tax compliance and planning. As I said, this is an elder brother for, for the regulation as an exam. You would get to see various complex topics that would be that would be not be covered in the regulation as a subject. Those all will be covered over here. You'll be, of course, going through the, the property transactions, again, complex transactions, the tax planning, tax compliances. And then you would also be covering various tax compliances planning for the individuals per se. Just give me a sec. <clears throat> Duration of the exam is four hour exam. If I really talk on the quotient pattern, we have 68 MCQs that we'll be covering out here, having 50% weightage. And then you have seven task-based simulations that we'll be covering, having 50% of the weightage as well as the TCP is concerned. Any, any questions so far, guys, before I really move on and start discussing the other areas, any questions anyone has, you know, till the, till what we've covered till date on the uh, subjects, on the kind of questions that you get, the exam structure, any questions anyone has? Sir, Anybody? I have questions related to uh, the task-based simulation. Go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, simply just wanted to confirm that whether it would be a theoretical test that we have to uh, write some paragraph or like a, a short, uh, in, in a short word, we have to describe it or it would be similar to the MCQ as well. It can be anything. May I know who I'm talking to? Can I know your name, please? Dinesh. Dinesh, it can be anything. It can be a fill in the blank. It can be a uh, multiple choice question wherein you have to select one. It can be calculative question wherein you have to calculate some figure and put it out there. And it can be a paragraph too. So it all depends because if let's say in audit, he may give you that, you know, you need to you know write a response. So you probably have to type that response and put it right. out there. So it can be depending upon subject, it can be combination of anything. And I can tell you, Dinesh, that, you know, the kind of limits that we'll be providing you, you know, we, you know, that should give you the, all of the, I would say, perspectives because our LMS has thousands and thousands of questions, you know, which you can practice on your own um, because that is where, you know, uh, uh, you, we, we have an edge in terms of giving you a perspective as to how the MCQs would be coming, how the multiple choice questions are being tested out in the exam how the simulations are being tested on the exam, what kind of simulations you may get into different topics, of different topics. So everything is being covered in our LMS and you will get, will be getting an access for that. Right. Uh, that, uh, one, one more question here. Like the 50% weightage is of the MCQ and 50% weightage is for the uh, task with simulation. Right, sir? Except so, IS. Uh, Except yes. ISC, you have 60 and 40. Okay. So just wanted to confirm here that we have to score, like the passing mark is 75%. So we have to score 75% uh, 
for each section individually like for mcq 75 and for task based solution 75% or that could be a combination of 75% they don't disclose that dinesh they don't okay so in all we have to obtain the 75 yes how okay. they are how they are valuing each and every marks is something that they decide okay but in total you would need to have 75% of your marks but one thing i can tell you there is no negative marking here so and that is the reason we always say that come what may you have to answer at least uh, at least try answering each and every question do not leave that blank you know blank right thank you anybody guys anyone <clears throat> Any questions, anyone, Vishal, any, anything that you have that comes to your mind? Guys, this is your time. If you're not asking questions, you're keeping it to yourself. That's that's not going to be helping you any which ways. All right, moving on. Moving on, guys. I, I do have one more slide left, which we should explain you in terms of you know, what you'd be getting as a support from Fentram in terms of, you know, of course, pursuing your USCP as a journey. You would be getting the, you know, the live online interactive sessions, the way we are interacting right now. But, you know, it'll, it, as I said, it'll not gonna be, it's not going to be an audio one. It's certainly going to be video one. So it's certainly an interactive session that we would have. We'll be providing you some of the comprehensive study material and the content, uh, you know, from world-renowned Becker Professional Education. So that is something that will come your way. You'll we will be providing you the self-paced learning uh, LMS, uh, which will have the you know the the plethora of questions, sim including simulations that you would practice. That will also have mock exams. That will also have final exam. That will also give you you know how your exam is being, uh, how your progress have been. So that will effectively give you. You know your progress report also on the ongoing basis. That will also give you a you know a perspective in terms of you know which areas you're lagging, which areas you need to work for. So there is huge huge effort that has gone, uh, you know in 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 that LMS. I think that's gonna be certainly some something that's gonna be very helpful. You would also get the target mentoring from qualified CPs like us. And to end support that you would need in the evaluation and licensing is something that you would also get from us. Mm -hmm. And you would also get the revision boot camps and mock exams with evaluations in terms of, you know, how you're going. And of course, we also have the doubt resolution process available for you, which you can, you know, of course, fall back us you know, to us and, you know, we'll be more than happy to help you there. That's pretty much guys that I really wanted to cover. I do want to highlight one thing, you know, I think somebody mentioned you know, uh, how uh, how can you uh, get the Australian CPA or Canadian CPA? Uh, the both of the countries have their own specific processes and they have the, you know, the, the recognition agreement being signed with US. So, uh, you know, when it comes to you, Australia, you don't have to appear for any exam. Of course, there is some documentary evidence that you really need to provide. Documentation plays a big time role over there that you need to provide, but there are no exams as such that you really need to appear for. But these things keep changing, my friend. So, you know, you probably have to refer the, the latest one to really check on that. As far as the, the transfer to CPA in Canada is concerned, while there is no exam, but I, you know, but what I know is that there is some ethics and, and uh, professional ethics exam that you really need to appear in Canada to be able to transfer your your credentials from US CPA to Canadian CPA. Do you have to surrender your US CPA qualification? Answer is no, that is not something that is there. So should not be worried about that. What career opportunities open up after earning CPA designation? Akriti, it is huge. And I would recommend all of you guys 
to just go and don't believe me, just go and try, type on Google, you know, US CPA jobs in your own territory. So type in Delhi, type in Mumbai, type in wherever you are, type that and you will be stunned to know the kind of opportunities that CPA designation is currently having. Whether it is Big Four, whether it is Indian MNC, whether it is US MNC, whether it is Canadian MNC, whether it is European MNCs, all of them are open for hiring CPAs. In fact, they equate CPAs equivalent to their own country's chartered accountants. So that is the edge of having a US qualification. Guys, do not forget that since US has an edge over any other country, their qualifications also have an edge over any other country. So you would always have an edge if you are a US CPA because you effectively become a global citizen if you have done something like that. All right. Helpful tip for managing my study time for US CPA exam. You know, Anaya, we will be talking on, on this in at length when we'll be starting off our sessions. You'll not only get the tips, but you'll also get the plan. So we'll be, you know, helping you with the study plan that you should have, that you should be rigorously following in terms of uh, ensuring that at least you are able to get the uh, some rigor out for your own, uh, I would say, um, journey for becoming a qualified CPA. So, you know, we will be providing all those tips that you really need. What is the salary of a qualified CPA in India? It ranges. It ranges from the level of uh, experience that you have, uh, from the kind of prior qualification that you have. But I can tell you a ballpark figure. It ranges between, let's say, 8 to 12 lakhs of rupees. Uh, that is going to be a starting salary of, of a qualified CPA. Can be more, can be less. But that's the general age. <clears throat> Any question, anyone? Guys, this is your time. If you're not utilizing it, you know, I'm sad for that. You know, you probably have to be open up in terms of asking questions out here. You are going to be taking one of the important decisions of your life. You probably have to be very vocal and very, uh, you know, curious, curious to really understand what, what can really help you take the right decision for yourself. Rida, Rahul, Ankit, Shivani, Crystal, somebody was saying something. Sorry. I have one question. From yes, uh, discipline subject, we you have said we need to choose any one subject. For exam purpose, right? But for knowledge purpose, what's your suggestion? We need to study all three subjects or anyone is enough for? Only one subject. You don't have to look for other two. Only one subject. For, for knowledge purpose. Yes, no, only one subject. Okay, thank you. Any other question, guys? Uh, sir, Dinesh here again. One more question I have. Yes, Dinesh. Uh, as I asked you earlier that I would not be in a position to spare more than two hours for the study as I'm already working. So... Will that be sufficient for the practice and to clear the exam? Now speak more on that, Dinesh. Two hours every day? Two hours, two hours every, every day. Two hours every day. Maximum. What will you give me on Saturdays and Sundays? Saturday and Sundays, whatever you will ask, I'm, I'm open. Give me number of hours, Dinesh. Let's be realistic. Give me I can of... give you eight to ten hours sir, on Saturday and Sunday. Then go ahead, Dinesh. Don't think twice. Go ahead. If you can give me, if you can give me fifteen to twenty hours a week, right, sir, you will crack this in fifteen months of time. But if you'll cheat me, Dinesh, right, then you're cheating yourself, my friend. Definitely, sir, it is true. Give me fifteen to twenty hours every week, eighteen, fifteen to eighteen months. This qualification is yours, rigorously. No compromise on giving me twenty hours every week. If you can promise me that, Bhagwan Shri Krishna will not be able to do it. Definitely, 20 hours for a week, I can surely give you. 20 hours a week, you know, you're home, my friend. Mm -hmm. For sure, sir. What is the cost of CPA exam and process? See, <laughs> there is a, of course, there is a uh, uh, CPA examination and evaluation fees that is there. That, that goes to NASBA and, of course, AICPA. That comes around 2,50,000 rupees. That's the fees that you really need to pay to them. 
Uh, and in addition to that, there is a fees that comes to FinTram for teaching you for classes. Uh, you can certainly reach out to FinTram team. There is this, you know, scholarship running right now under the Diwali offer. They can really help you with that. And the team should be able to provide you more detail. If somebody from FinTram is there on the call, can I please ask you to uh, message your name and num number over here uh, on which the guys can really reach out? Can you please some can you please do that? I'll probably probably ask someone to do that right away. So just one more question came to my mind. May I ask? Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, as, as I heard that there are 55 states who are providing uh, the US CPA certification. Okay. There are there are fifty five. Let's say if I enroll for a particular state, okay. It's, is okay. there any any particular difference uh, in the license or in the values of the certification that if I'm let's say if I'm enrolling from the Washington or if I'm enrolling for from the smaller state. So would there be any particular difference or in the value of the degree in the value of the license degree? Or like it is same. Absolutely not. No difference, Dinesh. You 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 become a CPA from Massachusetts. You become a CPA from Colorado. You become a CPA from New York. There is no difference as such. So you are a CPA there in US. No difference. Now, can you become CPA from any state? Answer is no. There are every state has a different requirement, and every case needs to be assessed in relation to that. So we will be doing that work for you and we'll be really telling you that this is the state you would be eligible for and you should go ahead and apply for that and you should be really sitting out from that state. Does that really make any difference to your life as far as getting XYZ state? Answer is nope, no. absolutely not. Absolutely true, sir. Out of that question came to my mind out of the curiosity because I have heard that the every state has a different rules. So I was curious to know that is there any particular difference in the value of degrees or not? Nope. So Zero, no difference. See, the only thing that they have done is, you know, they are different from India. In India, you uh -huh. have like, in India, you don't have state level chartered accountants. But in US, since state is really powerful and every state in itself is a sort of own legislation or legislative assembly for that matter, they have their own qualified CPAs for that particular state. So, you know, that's how it is. <clears throat> and that is the reason, you know, over there states are having their own chartered accountants. But you can, of course, I can tell you, one of my friend was a, a CPA from New York. He shifted to <clears throat> Washington and then he just transferred his CPA of New York to CPA of Washington. And then he became a CPA of Washington. So should not be any problem. And is there is there are any particular subject which I must have in my BCom or MBA degree uh, to become the eligible to pursue CPA? Yes, there are some credits that are needed in accounting and of course in business. Once you'll start the process, the next team would be able to really tell you in terms of you know how does that happens. You know they would be doing a pre evaluation for yourself before you go for formal evaluation as a process to tell you. Are you eligible or not? So team would certainly help you. I think somebody from our team has given the number. You can reach out to Sneha. She should be able to help you. Sneha, if you can uh, pin that number in the chat, I think that will be really great. Now, I'm sure, I'm quite sure, sir, that the pre-assessment would happen before paying the fees because after paying the fees, if I come to know that I'm not eligible for that, Yes, uh, yes, 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 absolutely. If you are not eligible for the case, Dinesh, we will not even enroll you. Okay. Let me tell you that upfront, we'll not, we do, will not enroll you. Unless and until you want us to, you just want to study, then that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. Right, sir. Got it. Thank you. Anybody else, anything <clears throat> before we really wrap up? I only see Dinesh speaking, nobody else. Guys?
I've given the number over here again, just to make sure that you know you are able to. Uh, reach out to the respective people. All right, guys, if there is nothing, then we'll wrap up. Thank you very much for joining in. We have given the numbers over here. You can certainly reach out to the team and team shall be able to help you in the best possible way. Wish you all the luck and see you in the class. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.